Well, smart access memory or resizable bar on a Vega 64? Is it a good or a bad idea? Well, it is time to find out. Hey guys, and welcome to another video. This time, we're going to see if smart access memory or resizable bar is to any benefit at all on Vega 64. So let's start by going over the test system. So over here, I have an MSI B450 Tomahawk Max 2, updated to the latest beta BIOS with an AMD Ryzen 5 3600 overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz and a 16 gigabyte Corsair Vengeance LPX 3000 megahertz and of course the Vega 64 so when you have the beta BIOS or the BIOS on your motherboard that supports a resizable bar you need to make sure that at least for the Vega 64, you're using the 20.11.1 drivers. I have tried with later ones, but it just doesn't work. And uh, I'm going to show you how to enable it. So let's begin. So once you're in the BIOS, you just want to enter settings and go under advanced and then you have a PCI subsystems settings it might be named differently on your motherboard but we sort of this on MSI so enter that then you can see resize bar just click enabled and you also want to have above 4G memory enabled for this to work and when you're done just press F10 and save and reset so now you have enabled the resizable bar so you technically should have smart access memory now and uh, to verify that it is on and enabled you want to go into ADA64 enter display and go down to Vulcan and then you're gonna scroll all the way down until you see memory heap first you see remote which is the GPU memory and then under it you have local so when uh, resizable bar is disabled it will only show 256 megabytes well now it is 8 gigabytes sounds good doesn't it so i ran a couple of tests and the games in both 1080p and 1440p and uh, what i can say is that some results aren't that satisfactory so let's begin so let's start with fire strike with these settings on it was 19,620 points and with these settings off it scored 19,646 points and time spy so in time spy with these settings on it scored 1747 points yeah amazing and with these settings off it scored 7170 pretty significant difference so now let's move over to the games and in the shadow of the tomb raider at 1080p high settings it was one fps difference 
113 with these settings enabled and the 114 with it disabled. So I'm gonna have a lot of difference. And in 1440p, high settings again with the settings enabled, 80 FPS and with these things disabled, 83 FPS. So did it make a whole lot of difference there? So here it comes one of the worst results. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the 1080p high, with these settings enabled. A whopping 13 FPS and disabled 72 FPS. Kind of fun. So 1440p with these settings enabled, 11 FPS, super playable. I swear it. No, I don't. Don't take me seriously. And with these settings disabled, 57 FPS. At least playable. And Division 2 in 1080p, high settings. With these settings enabled, it was 102 FPS. And disabled, 103 FPS. And yeah, 1 FPS. Does it matter though? And in 1440p, high settings as usual, 57 FPS when these settings were enabled, and when they were disabled, 74 FPS. Then I have Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p with a balanced number 4 preset, which I think is which gives good quality and performance. This doesn't make a whole lot of difference in that game either, but let's move on in. With these settings enabled, 82 FPS, and disabled, 79 FPS, and in 1440p, same graphic preset, with these settings enabled, 59 FPS, and with these settings disabled, 61 FPS. So now, it is time for Hitman 2, and I need also to run Hitman 3, but I didn't save the exact numbers for it. I will talk about that also after this. So Hitman 2 in 1080p high settings. This did make a difference. With these settings enabled, 98 FPS, and with these settings disabled, 81 FPS. So you gain 17 FPS, quite awesome. That is what we'd like to see. And then it's time for 1440p, high settings also. With these things enabled, 80 FPS. And disabled, 81 FPS. You lost one FPS. It is not worse than Hitman 3. So let's talk about Hitman 3 and the results I got from it. It was a true crap fest, to put it nicely. And in 1080p, the absolute rock bottom settings, it was at, at, as high as 33 FPS. Beat that. So that was with resize bar and, or smart access memory enabled. So I thought that it was just a driver because I tested it without it before and it was fine with the later drivers. So I had to revert to an older driver. So I thought maybe it was a driver issue, but it wasn't. It was resize bar that was the issue. Because when I disabled it and ran the game again, then I could crank up the settings to 1080p with a high all across the board. And I got 120 plus FPS, pretty consistent. So talk about one hell of a difference there. And even when I cranked the game up to 4K, it did still beat that, but 
it was when I put everything to high as well. It was uh, around 40 FPS and I did put it down to medium with some uh, reflections off and the ray tracing bit off as well. Then it was around 70 FPS, pretty consistent. So it was actually enjoyable. So, was this worth it? No, not really. Don't go through the hassle and uh, install a beta BIOS and uh, do all these things. But you know how to do it now after you've seen this video. So if you want to test it out for yourself, then go right ahead. I wouldn't do it, but it's all up to you. So that's it for this time. And uh, was the results meeting your expectations? Or not, leave it in a comment. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Mm -hmm.